Our love was comfortable and so broken. She's perfect. Oh, Beyonce. Beyonce for me, yeah. I, I know some of her songs more than I know uh, any of Ariana Grande's songs. I think Beyonce is truly, truly special. That's nothing against yeah. Ariana Grande, but Beyonce is remarkable work, really. Sort of. My daughter, when you mention Ariana, she always says, we're so lucky to have her. <laughs> so I'm going to go, on Scarlett's behalf, I'll go Ariana. Bieber? Bieber. Gotta love Bieber. Yeah. Oh, you have to go for the Biebs. <laughs> I mean, he's been around forever. <laughs> it, 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 lot. He's, he's been, his career's longer than yours. Is that even a question? <laughs> <laughs> the Spice Girls. <laughs> Spice Girls, yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's got to be. Whoa, that's a tough cut. That's a tough one. Obviously... I'm going to get in with Ed first. <laughs> I'm going to get in with Ed first because the other guys are genius too. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Can I be very clear? What he meant to say was Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I'll go for Gaga. I'll go for Rihanna then. <sighs> Well, I'm, a, I'm an Oasis guy. They're one of my favourite bands. Oasis for you and I'll go for Blur, just because, you know, so how, how do I pick? Well, I'm from Manchester, so obviously I have to go with uh, Oasis. I don't know the first band. Yeah. Five Seconds of Summer. I, uh, so I guess Little Mix. <laughs> little Mix for us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Well, you'd have Oh Bloody Oh Bloody Da. I do Which, for love some reason or other, you think is the Beatles' best. I'm going to go for Spice Girls. I'll just go for, like, Wannabe by the Spice Girls. Because it's, what a tune. I'd always go, I'd go for Ring Ring, the Amber song. Uh, of course, ring, yeah. Ring, <laughs> why don't you give me a call? You can see why I wasn't cast in the leading role. I mean, the joy of music is sharing it with people, of course. But if, if I had to, then maybe Teardrop by Massive Attack. It's such a stunning piece of music, yeah. A piece of music to keep forever. <sighs> Probably Whitney. Um, oh, I don't know which one, though. He, he just walked in. We were obviously, as you would do, looking for very talented singer-actors, and there were some very talented ones came in. But they began to reveal how tricky it, this was going to be to do 15 songs, not by the, not the original versions by the Beatles, you know, performed by somebody else. And he walked in and it were like they were his songs. And they weren't special arrangements, they were very faithful to the originals, and yet they felt like they were his songs, which was a bit of a... So he was at once very familiar and yet strange, and we thought, that's it. That's what we want from Jack Malik, is... It is a magical process casting, you know, because we didn't see anyone except Lily. We saw lots of people for his part. Someone suggested put Kate on tape. I had a much more sort of traditional older woman in my mind, and that was that. We both knew Joel from the telly. I mean, it really is yeah. a joy. It really is like being in a supermarket. And you can say, well, I'll have that one there. And oh, what, oh yeah, what about this? Yeah. I've never tried that before. It's, a, it's lovely casting, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's obviously, for an audience, it's 95% of the film as well, in effect. Obviously, there's things hidden within that, like the writing and the way they do the scenes and stuff like that. But really, it's that casting that's 95% of it, isn't it? No, <laughs> it was number two. Ooh, well, he uh, says he was I number asked, three. I but... asked Chris Martin because I'd done a Game of Thrones sketch with Chris Martin in which he was a very funny version of himself, sort of proud and antsy. He said no. <laughs> he sent me a videotape saying, you seem to have got the wrong person. Asking me to act in a film would be like asking a butcher to do brain surgery because <laughs> I can't act. And then I do know Ed. Uh, we both live in Suffolk and I've known him for years. And I knew he'd be funny, but what was great is that he's dove into it with such pleasure. He's really curious about things, you know, Ed, and he really wanted to do the job properly. And he is actually the actual real life inspiration for my writing of the film, because he is a local boy who then, as it were, went to America, got very famous, has come back and married a girl he was at school with. He is both a um, star of, and in a funny way, the inspiration for the movie. I don't know if we did really do it. Mm. We kind of met, we both met in class, Danny. we met with Danny at a pub. 
Um, and that was it, really. I mean, actually, then we saw each other that night, the day after. Oh, at the theatre? One of our friends was uh, In doing Hamlet. a play. Yeah, Hamlet. He literally wrote me a note saying, you got anything around because I'm, I'm not doing anything next. Uh, but and it worked said, out very yeah, easy. Yeah, I was I managed to hang on to just being a writer. <laughs> no, he sent me the script and it was extraordinary reading it. And the, for a director, it's the, that moment when you read a script is the closest you ever get to how an audience see the film. Because they see it once after all the time and you have to hang on to that feeling. And, it, and, it, and if it's a joyous one where you're totally captivated and in tears, which I was reading it, you kind of commit. So I said to him, let's do it. And you try and protect that and nurture it and let everything else that gets added to it, all the genius that comes in, all the people like Himesh and Lily and everybody who come into it, you want them to deliver that feeling you have when you first read it. And hopefully we got close to that anyway, yeah.